This is David Allen Greer, and you're watching Our World with Black Enterprise. See, I raised the eyebrow. I gave him that little, you know, shakao at the end. Porgy and Bess is a love story that's been told to many generations. Now it's back on Broadway. I caught up with one of the co-stars, David Allen Greer, and said, look. We are here with the legendary actor, David Allen Greer. Thanks for being here today, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. So talk to me about this, uh, this new play that you're a part of. It's old and new, right? A uh, new production directed by Diane Paulus with myself, Norm Lewis, Audra McDonald. Ripping it up, man, every night, having a ball. What's it like to, to have to take hold of an opera, a, mm -hmm. a musical a, that, that's been so important to so many people? Well, there's a lot of ownership. You know, when you do uh, this production of, of, this is probably the greatest and most well-known American opera. So everybody has a lot of ownership. They remember how they saw it. They remember the film, their favorite production. You know, so they come with all of that. Yeah. And it was really for me as an artist and for us, it's kind of trying to carve out our own production, being true to ourselves as artists and kind of putting that uh, putting that over to the side. I'm really not trying to compete with any of those people, any of those previous pr pr productions. I'm trying to find my own way in this. Well, you all have certainly found your way in this one. I mean, you've mm -hmm. made the play sleeker. It's, it's more, I guess, efficient. Better. Be yes, it is better. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I want I this George Gershwin, you know. I, I the... No, he wrote it. If it weren't, listen, we love George Gershwin. If it weren't for Gershwin, we wouldn't be here. You know how there, there are some people who people don't want to do remakes, like Luther yes. Vandross, Marvin <laughs> Gaye. You know, so like, don't do Luther, don't do Stevie. You know, certain people just leave a little, yes. you know but, what I mean? Well, well, what do you say to those people? grand critics? opera. Well, it's being right. done. It's being done every day all over the world, and it will exist as a grand opera. Right. And, and, and it's not as if, we said uh, we're going to pass a law so that it can never be done. Right. You're not burning the old script, no, right? That, that you can only do it our way, but we're just interpreting it the way we want to interpret it, you know? Well, so, so far, the, the reviews and the response mm -hmm. to your interpretation has been powerful, positive reviews. It's been reviews. awesome. It's been awesome, especially, you know, uh, we're selling out to see these audiences uh, give us the response that they're giving us, really vibing on what we're doing, and the word of mouth is incredible, uh, it really feels great, you know, it feels great. I was telling people, <laughs> I'm not used to being in a production where they're going, everything's great. I'm used to the production meetings where it's like, look, look, you may make it to next week. <laughs> right, right, right. If you got friends or family, tell them to come now. <laughs> right, right. That's the kind of stuff I'm used to. Can I get five tickets? Tick 50. Exactly. <laughs> How many do you want? <laughs> right. You get a ticket, you get a ticket. Take right. the whole balcony. <laughs> you know, so this is a really a joy to, to actually be able to tell my family and friends, well, I'll try and get you tickets, you know. That so must be a good feeling. Yeah, it's really great. But the response hasn't just been to the play, it's been to you, your, your character, your mm -hmm. performance. People have been impressed by your voice, by yeah. your dramatic chops. There's a How does that feel to get that kind of response? It feels to you? great because I'm really working with <laughs> brilliant, legendary people. You know, Audra McDonald is the reason I really wanted to do this. Hmm. Four time Tony winner. And it's not just her, it's from top to bottom. The talent that they've assembled in this production, I feel like I had to nightly, and I have to step up and meet them at their level. I mean, that is really what uh, uh, I have, is demanded of me. So, you know, it's one of those things where you come in, you hit the ground running. It is no time to be half-stepping. And that's a formal opera term, half-stepping. Half-stepping. I like that. You have these great acting chops and that you have so much skill on Broadway. You went to Yale. I know, you know I, mean? I know. You know, stand-up is part of me. It's not all of me. Um, this musical side, this dramatic side, I just want to keep living and 
discovering as an artist. Yeah. And whichever medium that takes me in, I, I want to be free to uh, a really mind that and discover and see what happens in them. Do you have any preferences? You know, some actors tell me that they love being on Broadway because mm -hmm. they get the immediate feedback from the crowd right oh, there. It's fun. it's fun. It's fun to be in New York. It's fun to work in New York on Broadway. Yeah. I still get a thrill. I get a thrill walking to work, walking down the street, uh, seeing my friends or down the street, around the corner who are yeah. working, walking through that stage door. It's awesome, and I love what I do. Do you get any, any anxiety about playing a character, particularly mm -hmm. in this, in this uh, performance, uh, Sport and Life, right? Mm -hmm. Who's been played by Cab Calloway, Sammy Davis right. Jr. I mean, you're standing on some extraordinary shoulders. These are heroes of mine. So there's never any part of the process which is I have to do better than, greater than, I just am grateful for this opportunity and trying to find my own way in this production because those are legends. I mean, you know, right. Sam Davis Jr., they right. don't make brothers like that. Right. He did everything. Right. You know, well, nowadays, you, that's like Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan all rolled into one. Plus, he could sing, act like Denzel, I mean, all that stuff. Brothers, now you got one area of expertise. Right. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the next generation? You talked about people who influenced you. What do you mm -hmm. How do you feel about the next generation of young actors? Is, is, it, is Hollywood better? Is Broadway better? It is better because, you know, when I was a young actor, when I was a young actor, <laughs> there was one famous brother. You know, it was like, okay, it was Richard Pryor, and he gave it to Eddie Murphy, and, you know. Right. But then it broke right open. So there's room. There's room for more than just one um, token person of color. Speaking of color, Unliving Color's been revived. <laughs> no, it is. How do you feel about that? That is a brilliant, that's, that's a good segue right there. Speaking yeah. of color. Right. See, um, I've been working on segues, man. <laughs> segues for dummies, man. Well, I tweeted, I tweeted, you know, hey, Living Color's coming back. I, they're getting the band back together. And everybody's <laughs> like, right, are you going to be back there? I'm like, really? It's been 20 years. Right. We need a new, young cast. Right. And that, that will be the key to its success. But can we get a cameo? We got to see like of men course, on film man, or I don't know, man. men on Twitter. Something, they'll something put us in school. jail. You can't get away with that. Oh, you, you been following what? the news, man? Uh, Come I, on. I, I, I don't know if we could do that, but we'll do something. We'll do something. Okay. Life is good. Life is good. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Up next, just how much are blacks behind in technology? The answer will surprise you. 50% uh, of African Americans have broadband access right now, 65% of white Americans have it. But when you start talking about lower income communities, underserved communities, that 50% number drops dramatically, almost by half. 